Oh, I cracked it. I'm taking my 3D printing to the next level and we're going pro. Chi2 Systems reached out to me and asked if I'd be interested in trying out their new Chi2 box software along with some pretty high end resin and an upgrade screen for my old printer here. So I couldn't help but take them up on the offer. And I'm very excited to kind of put all these things to work, but the first thing we're gonna do is print some benchmark miniatures and maybe even a bus to see if we can improve the print quality with all this new equipment. My name is Troy, this is Facility D20, and let's get at it. This is Claymore Miniatures Instagram page. I'll link it in the description below because they make some really cool miniatures and boss. For this test bench print, I decided to do this particular boss here. And as you can see, they got some really cool free miniature files to download as a welcome pack. I recommend you guys check them out. I started off by loading in some resin that I was familiar with and I wanted to give myself a good benchmark to start off with. Now, I've been using the free version of Cheeto Box for a while, so I just generated their auto supports on this bus and sliced it up. Now, when I do this, I like to go in and make sure that there's no islands. And in this particular case, there were some islands. So when I find the islands, I like to just go in and add an extra support. Generating the auto supports in Cheeto Box free version actually yielded about six unsupported islands in this particular bus. Once I was happy that it was going to print fine, I sliced it up. It was going to take about 7 hours and 8 minutes. And hey, I got a very successful print with settings that I've been using for a long time in my printer here. Next up I did the swords. That was another 5 hour print. The pre-supports on this base was completed by Claymore Miniatures. Now, I had a failure here and this is definitely due to suction force of my printer. Suction force on my printer is off the charts and this is a common failure for me. But this is the boss when it was done. If you're enjoying this video, go ahead and smash the like button. Now that our benchmark print is done, I'm really excited to go in again and slice it all up using Chi2 Box Pro. Chi2 Box Pro is a professional level software, so I'm really excited about all the new features that it has to offer. Let's take a look at some of the great features Chi2 Box Pro has to offer. The first one here is support scaling. So this is pretty cool because when you scale down a miniature, you can scale it down and the support diameter remains the same. This is very helpful because when supports get smaller, they get brittle. Next up, we have model altering interchangeable. So what you can do here, let's say if you support the model and you notice there was a little bit of a mistake, you can go back in, fix the STL, re-upload it, and the supports don't change. Another thing that's really cool here is the small pillar support auto snapping. Basically, you're uh, creating these tree supports here that's really helpful for a miniature. The auto support function enhancement is really cool because it'll actually intuitively generate supports to support your supports. The support merge function allows you to merge multiple supports together, therefore reducing the amount of materials and making prints a little easier to get out of the bed. Also, it has some built-in time compensations that allow you to have more accurate print times when slicing. The keep the main cavity function allows you to make sure that the cavity stays in the big part of the model and it don't spread it into small parts that you don't want it to like the pike weapon on this miniature. This software also has some really powerful auto and manual repair function tools. You can even do things like go in and manually add faces if you need to. This is really useful when you got a miniature that's just missing a face or maybe normals are reduced and you don't want to drag it out of the slicer program back into your modeling software of choice. So I think this is a really cool feature that I'm definitely going to be using moving forward. And I got to say that having this much control over supports in general is awesome. So even doing these things in practice, you can see here that adding supports and adding the auto snapping tree supports is super easy to do. It works really well. And then adding some supports to support the supports is always a very nice thing to help make sure the models don't fail. Even the merge tool, a simple click of the button and you're reducing the amount of support stems really awesome stuff. So this was a model I made a while back and you can see I've got some reverse normals around my door here. This is one of my favorite repair tools on this new software. It's called reverse triangles. So I just got to go in, select my faces that were upside down and hit reverse and they fixes them super easy. And also support scaling is really easy to do. You can see this model I have here. So if I go ahead and I generate all supports and then I take this miniature and copy it over supports and all 
and scale it down by 20%. I make sure I click the toggle that says scale supports accordingly. And when I do, you can see that the diameter scales down. Now, if I were to untoggle this and scale it down again, you can see that the diameter of the supports got smaller. So this is a super simple feature to use as well and works great for when you just need to scale miniature down a tiny bit. So this next part, this next part I'm a little bit nervous about. I gotta go in and take my photon, pull it apart, take it to old screen and put it in a new mono screen. I've never done something like this before, so fingers crossed that it goes good. First thing was to remove the lower frame. Next up, I had to disconnect the screen and cut this two-sided tape here because that ribbon cable was really stuck on there. Then I had to remove the motherboard and disconnect all the connections. Take this bracket off because it was going to be reused for the new motherboard. Next, I used a heat gun to heat up the screen. Oh, I cracked it. So I think if I went at it from the other direction, I probably wouldn't have snapped the screen because there was more pressure on that side due to the ribbon cable here that connects the screen to the motherboard. Next, I popped open the new box of stuff. I've got my screen here, my bracket, and some new connections. And here's the motherboard, much smaller. Remove these brackets and install the new bracket that holds the screen. Put down some two-sided tape. Remove the protective film and make sure you put it in this direction with the copper part up. And then I very, very carefully installed the new screen. I use these tape strips that they provided to hold it down. Then it was time to replace some of these connections because the original motherboard had small connections for the fan, but the new motherboard had larger connections here, so I had to replace some of the fans with these bigger green ones. Once that was done, I just connected it all to the motherboard. Screw the motherboard back in place and close the frame up. So you can get these upgrade kits for quite a few printers here. I recommend you go to the website and check it out. I'll link it in the description below. Besides for smashing this old screen up, the install wasn't too bad. I'm going to turn this machine on for the first time and see if I got anything done right or if it's just going to be a miserable failure. Come on, let's have a look. Well, looks like the screen has come on. So far, so good. The first thing I did was an exposure test and the light worked, so that was good. Next, I leveled the bed. And then I got the Conjure Sculpt resin ready to load in. I loaded it in, the first thing I noticed this stuff was pretty thick. But as you can see here, it's got some pretty cool features and it's supposed to be pretty strong stuff. The first print was a fail. So I re-leveled the bed and tried again. You can see here are my original settings. I was exposing at 1.9 seconds and I think it was a little low. This one wasn't quite perfect, but it was pretty good. It just didn't stick to the bed great and I thought I could use it. But I washed it for five minutes, which I've learned is too long with this resin. One minute is enough. I cured it for three, which I learned and you need about six minutes. And you can see here I deteriorated the surface of the resin. So that's a fail, it was just underexposed, just way too soft. The next one, tore the pieces, I don't know what happened here, but I went in, I changed my settings to 2.4 seconds, and I think I found the sweet spot, because after slicing this thing up in Chi2 Box Pro and generating the auto supports, well, things took a turn for the better. Hey, I got a good print. Perfect. Then it was the base. This was a three hour print. 
came out perfect and fit nicely. The arms, another three hour print, and I had the bust done. You can see here that the base on this new one is a lot better than the old one that ripped apart. Um, I didn't have the same failure on the sword as I did with the old one. A failure here on the cloak that didn't happen with the new one. So overall, the Chi 2 Box Pro auto supports are definitely better. Before we go any further here, first things first, I'm going to give away both of these statues. Don't worry, I'm going to fix the base on this one. All you got to do is subscribe and leave a comment below and tell me what you like to 3D print or what you would 3D print if you had a printer. I really want to take a moment and thank all my supporters on Patreon. Michael, Gray, Kara, Eli, and Glenda. You guys rock. I really appreciate the support. If anybody's interested in my Patreon, check it out below. It's a great way to support the channel. Now, with that said, let's talk about this resin. I got a little bit of mixed feelings about this resin. Um, the pros are it's very strong, it's very durable, and you can get some nice detail out of it. But at the end of the day, it took me a long time to dial in the settings. Um, I went through at least a half a bottle here before I got it to print. Some of that was because the resin was very sensitive to temperature and it was very sensitive to exposure times. And some of it because with all the new upgrades to my bed, my leveling process changed a little bit. Usually I could bring it down until I could pull a piece of paper out but not push it in. Um, that's normally how I leveled it, but now I had to like keep going down and down and down until I couldn't even pull it out. And when I figured that out, I started to print a lot easier and things were a lot better. So overall, you might have a little more success with this resin than I do. If you got a little more experience, you can dial your settings in a little bit quicker than I did. But at the end of the day, I'm happy with this print. Um, quality wise, it's very similar. Both of these are very similar in quality. But the speed at which I'm doing this now is just crazy. This is so much faster than this that it makes a world of difference for here in the facility, especially because I'm trying to do these videos and trying to get them out. And when it takes a week to print something, it just kills me. So, hey, that's a plus. The Slicer program, I've been loving the Slicer program. I've been using that one now for a while and it's really good. So guys, thanks for watching. I got some more awesome videos on my channel here. I've got myself 3D printing this really cool samurai army. And I also got myself 3D printing this really cool spinning castle. Check them out.